Today's video is brought to you by scdkey.com where you can pick up Office Pro 2019 right now for just $50. And if you use my code SK02 at checkout, you can save an additional 10% off that for an additional $5 of savings. So please check out the link down in the description below to scdkey.com. Hey, what's up guys, Joker here. Today I wanted to tell you about my absolute golden sample of an i9-9900K, which Intel sent out to me the other day. Now, you've already seen my initial review on the 9900K, and if you saw that, you may have heard me mention that I was having some problems last week with my test setup, which I was trying to troubleshoot. I narrowed it down to either being a bad CPU or a bad motherboard. I had that EVGA Z390 for the windboard. I'm actually getting a replacement, one of those sent out today. It's actually, no, it's coming today. It's already been sent out. I've even got a couple more coming from Asus and I've got one of the Gigabyte Z390 master boards coming. Um, but right now I'm actually using a, a budget board, but despite being using this budget board, which I picked up at Micro Center for $150. This is it right here. I'll link to it down below. It's the Asus Prime Z390P. It's one of the cheapest Z390 boards you can get. It's $150. However, as you'll see in this video, it has not held me back in terms of overclocking. Now, back to what I was saying before about getting another sample from Intel. Now, I was having issues with the system and I narrowed it down to the CPU or the motherboard. But just to kind of get the ball rolling in case it was the processor I was having issues with, Intel actually went ahead and sent me out another 9900K. This is actually the original 9900K that I was using, which was not a very good overclocker. I was able to get it to five gigahertz at about 1.37 volts. And I was using an air cooler in that, the Be Quiet Dark Rock 4 right here, which you may have seen in the Frame Raider 2.0 video. But I was having some really high temperatures when it came to overclocking because I was having to push the voltage up to 1.37, which really isn't a lot, honestly. But when it comes to the 9900Ks and how hot these things can run, because you're talking about eight cores inside of a package that maybe was intended initially for quad cores and six core processors on Coffee Lake, but now we're putting two additional cores in there and things can just get really toasty inside the 9900K, even though it's been soldered. So when I installed the new 9900K sample from Intel, I also did one other thing, which was switch out the cooler. So I pulled out the Be Quiet Dark Rock 4, and I actually stuck in a 360 millimeter all-in-one cooler that I had laying around since like last year when they launched. It's the Fractal Design S36. So it's a 360 millimeter radiator. Surely I thought this would be more than enough to be able to cool the 9900K, but I was actually met with a pleasant surprise that the second sample that I got from Intel was such a good overclocker. Like I was able to do five gigahertz uh, on both of these CPUs, but the voltage I had to do was vastly different. Uh, right now I'm in the BIOS, I'm actually at 5.2 gigahertz and I've even seen this thing up to 5.4, but at five gigahertz, I was actually able to run it all the way down at 1.25 volts. Like I just kept stepping down the voltage and it just kept being stable still. Like it was like, I was like, I was like, okay, 1.3, it's gonna be stable here, 1.28, 1.27 all the way down to 1.25. This 9900K is running at five gigahertz stable, which is probably where I'm going to end up leaving it at for the vast majority of the time when I'm doing testing and benchmarking on graphics cards and all of that, um, just because of the temperatures, because even with a 360 millimeter radiator, as I'm gonna show you here in a second, at 5.2 gigahertz and 1.37 volts, or you know, 1.35 volts, sorry, um, these things can get really freaking hot, even with a 360 millimeter water cooler. But I was just really happy to get the second sample because with the second one, I definitely hit the silicon lottery with how low I was able to put the voltage on this thing. And the temperatures on that are actually pretty reasonable when it's running down at a much lower voltage. Probably um, would have been low enough, honestly, if, if I was still using the Dark Rock 4, it would be fine at five gigahertz because I got the voltage so low. But when you start getting into like 5.1, 5.2, all the way up to 5.4 was the highest I was able to see this thing. Um, it, yeah, the air cooler definitely would not have been able to hold up because even with the S36, I could see this thing getting up to about 98 to 100 degrees Celsius, dancing right around there when I was running it at 5.4, which was 1.37 volts. 5.2 is 1.35, so I had to do an additional 0.2 volts to be able to get 5.4 gigahertz, 
but I have no doubts that if I were to put this thing on like LN2, it would be probably one of the better overclockers out there. So as you can see, we're in the BIOS right now and I'm running on the default XMP profile and this is on just the $150 ASUS Z390P board um, and I am on sync all cores and I do have it running at 5.2 gigahertz across all cores on the 9900K, which is a really great overclock, especially when the voltage is the same as what I had it at on the previous 9900K to be able to get, uh, what was it, five gigahertz. I had to run it at 1.35 to get five gigahertz on my previous sample, whereas this one, you can see it's running at 1.35 on the voltage, which I've set manually for this 9900K, and this is able to do 5.2 gigahertz. So we'll go ahead and we'll boot up into Windows now and we'll take a look at some of the uh, temperatures on the 9900K running under the Fractal Design S36. Keep in mind, once again, this is a uh, 360 millimeter water cooler, but still the 9900Ks just run really freaking toasty. So I went ahead and fired it up there. Again, we're running at 5.2 gigahertz, 1.35 volts here, and I'm running Ida 64. You can see I've got the top four boxes all checked here. It's only been running for about 20 seconds. I had started it and then I restarted it because I wasn't stressing the system memory as well and I just wanted to do all top four boxes for uh, the purposes of this video, but it's just running rock solid. I had it running like this yesterday for about an hour, but you can see in CPU ID hardware monitor, uh, the max temp we're seeing so far on the total package was 95 degrees Celsius. But most of the time here, we're hovering around anywhere from anywhere from like 65 to like 85, 90 degrees Celsius on all the different threads. But the whole package is actually running um, considerably higher. So yeah, like I said, the 9900Ks can get really friggin' warm. And if you are wanting to get into overclocking with these things, chances are, unless you receive a golden sample, you will definitely want to invest in a, at least a 240 millimeter water cooler because even with a 360 mil rad at 1.35 volts, this thing is hitting over 80 degrees Celsius, which I have not seen before on any of the Intel CPUs I have. Um, I had a 7700K, which I ran at five gigahertz for almost two years, and that thing never got this hot. And that was just running on a deep cool Captain 240 millimeter all in one, uh, 240 millimeter all in one, but it definitely did not get this warm. So the Coffee Lake Refresh 9900K, these things run really friggin' hot. But how does this translate into like actual gameplays? You can see right now we've been running for two minutes and the thing is running just really friggin' hot, as I said. Uh, I'll go ahead and run Cinebench right now because I am actually curious to see uh, what kind of score we can get on, uh, on Cinebench here with these clock speeds. And we'll see what that does to the temperatures with just running that, which is definitely not going to be as intensive on the processor as something like Ida64, which does some insane uh, floating point computation and stuff like that, which is probably not indicative of a normal workload. So we'll go ahead and we'll run this test and we'll come back in a second. All right, so we went ahead and completed our run there on Cinebench R15. And just as a reference, I have up a screenshot of the test that I ran the other day on the other 9900K, which was at stock settings. That was just stock settings, which runs at about 4.7 gigahertz across all cores, but it will boost to five gigahertz on a single core. And you could see that on the original one, I got a score of 2031 CB on the multi-core versus 2243 now when running at 5.2 gigahertz and single core went from 214 CB up to 225 CB, which is not going to see as big of a jump because of how the single core scores work, but also because if it's running on single core, even at turbo frequency, it's gonna hit five gigahertz on at least one core. So um, even though I was running it at stock settings, it would have been able to hit five gigahertz anyway, at least just on that single core. But what about actually gaming in terms of temps and stuff like that? I wanna go ahead and jump into uh, Rainbow Six Siege now, and we'll see what the actual real world temperatures are like when we're playing a game up at 5.2 gigahertz. And also right now I'm playing this without any audio whatsoever. I don't have my headphones plugged or anything on this system here downstairs. Um, so I'm probably going to get owned by like one of those bomber guys here on terrorist hunt because I won't be able to hear them really coming. So I'll try to do as best as I possibly can, but I just really want to run around here and see um, what the temps are. Right now I'm playing at 1080p on ultra settings. I believe it, I believe that it's at um, but I like using this and uh, I like using this game because you could see all those cores and threads like look how those 
are lit up. Like all 16 threads are firing at like 60 to 80% utilization, sometimes even getting into the 90s. And we're at 5.2 gigahertz and you can see the CPU overall, this is, keep in mind, this is overall temp. We're running around 70 to 75 degrees Celsius, which is really not that bad. Um, in terms of a game like this, which is using all the cores, it's not going to be as intensive as Ida 64. Ida 64 is ridiculous. So I do want to get across the CPUs can run hot, but it's not going to, that's, Ida 64 is not indicative of what you'll see uh, in general use case. And this was about what I was able to see as well when I was running like uh, uh, Sony Vegas. I did a 4K render on that just to see what it would do. There's one of those bomber guys right now. My aim is suffering, probably because I can't hear. That's why I'm aiming awful. <laughs> All right, we got the second bomber guy. If I was able to get the second bomber guy, we might be okay with the rest of this mission, just as is, even though I can't really hear anything. Go ahead and go upstairs and try to clear some of these guys out. I, flashbang. I was able to see the flashbang coming, even though I couldn't hear it. Oh, fuck. And I lost. I lost the mission. I wasn't really trying that hard there, but... Um, really just what I wanted to get across was the temps, but you could see the temps is like maxing out around 75, 76C. The 2080 Ti is actually running um, cooler than the 9900K here, even though it's a uh, Founders Edition card. So yeah, that's uh, kind of the story of my golden sample that I was able to get from Intel after having some problems last week. Um, but as I said, thankfully it was a motherboard issue at the end of the day and not a CPU issue. So I do actually, I do have to send one of these CPUs back. I want to get that out there right now. Uh, I do not get to keep both of these CPUs. We do get to keep one as reviewers, but because of the circumstance, they sent out a second one so that I could try to troubleshoot the issue. But I, you know, under the agreement that I, ha I had to send one back when I was uh, done figuring out what the issue was. And I'll leave it up to you guys to decide which one of those CPUs I'm going to be holding on to when I send the other one back. Um, spoiler alert, I'm going to keep the one that is the absolute silicon lottery winner. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of here, guys. If you want links to anything I talked about in this in this video, like the 9900K, the budget Z390P motherboard, which is $150. I know compared to like B350 on AMD, uh, $150 is not really budget, but that's the way things go on the Intel platform. But for Intel Z390, 150 is pretty cheap. I did see some boards for like 120, 130, but the Asus one has been rock solid for me. Um, it's got pretty good, it's got good heat sinks on the VRMs and all of that. So I've been very pleased um, with this motherboard. I'll also have a link to the Fractal Design S36. If you're thinking about picking up an all-in-one cooler that could possibly tame the temperatures of the 9900K, all of those links will be down below over to Amazon or Newegg, wherever you guys want to go ahead and pick them up. But I'm going to get out of here. Please leave a like on this video down below if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you're not already. And I'll catch you tomorrow for another video. Turn on that.